parcel to the Mount Holly Municipal Utilities Authority. This is the public hearing that's being conducted on a proposed adjustment of the schedule of rates of the Mount Holly Municipal Utilities Authority. The public hearing is being conducted as required by law pursuant to New Jersey Statute 40, colon 14B-23, which is the governing statute of the authority. This hearing will be conducted in the following manner. The authority will present its witness to testify concerning the proposed rate adjustment. After the witness testifies, any member of the public in attendance will have the opportunity to ask questions of the authority. After all questions are asked, any member of the public may also make a statement concerning the proposed rate adjustment. That statement is subject to questioning by the authority. After everyone has had a chance to make his or her statement, the public hearing will be closed and the authority will consider the proposed adjustment to its schedule of rates. The authority would like to call Executive Director Joseph V. Rizzuto. For the record, please state your name. Joseph V. Rizzuto. Okay, Mr. Rizzuto, what is your position with the Mount Holly Municipal Utilities Authority? Executive Director. Are you familiar with the operations of the authority? Yes. Okay, and are you familiar with the proposed changes to the authority's schedule of rates? Yes. Mr. Rizzuto, prior to establishing the reasonableness of these fees, did the authority publish notice of this public hearing, including the proposed rate adjustments, at least 20 days prior to tonight's meeting in two newspapers? Yes, the proposed rate adjustments to the authority's schedule of rates were published in the Carrier Post on May 16, 2013, and the Burlington County Times on May 17, 2013, to which I have proofs of publication. All right, for the record, I'd like the record to reflect that the affidavit of publication from the Carrier Post will be marked as Exhibit A, which is here, and the affidavit of publication from the Burlington County Times will be marked as Exhibit B. In addition to the notification to the two newspapers, did the authority also send notice of the proposed rate adjustments to the authority's schedule of rates to the municipal clerks of the townships of Mount Holly, East Hampton, Hainesport, Morristown, West Hampton, and Lumberton? Yes, notification has been served upon the townships of Mount Holly on May 16, 2013, and East Hampton, Hainesport, Morristown, West Hampton, and Lumberton on May 15, 2013. Okay, and I'd like the record to reflect that the certified mail receipts from the townships of Mount Holly, East Hampton, Hainesport, Morristown, West Hampton, and Lumberton will be marked as Exhibit C, and these are right here. So we can now proceed with the proposed rate adjustment to Schedule 1, Connection Fees, of the authority's schedule of rates. Mr. Rizzuto, did you recompute the connection fees in accordance with NJAC 40-14B-22 for the Mount Holly Municipal Utilities Authority as of the end of the previous fiscal year? Yes, the connection fee computations for each service unit within Mount Holly Township and outside Mount Holly Township are reflected in a document titled Mount Holly MLA Connection Fee Calculation. The study area was comprised exclusively of single-family residents in our service area. For non-residential customers within Mount Holly Township and outside Mount Holly Township, I divided the connection fee per service unit by the calculated average number of gallons per day for single-family residents to determine the connection fee per gallon per day. The minimum connection fee for all non-residential customers is equal to the connection fee that is charged to residential users. The service agreement between the authority and the municipalities that are serviced by the authority provide that connectors in those townships are to pay one and one-half times the charge for connection fees established for users within Mount Holly Township. There is a special sewer connection fee for hotels and motels. The connection fee for hotels and motels is a function of the number of rooms plus the amenities offered in the hotel or motel. The connection fee is calculated by multiplying the number of guest rooms by the rate per guest room, which is one-half of the residential rate. However, any office space, convention or meeting rooms, restaurants, laundries, etc. that are on the premises are calculated separately at the non-residential rate per gallon of estimated usage. And based upon the review of the document titled Mount Holly MUA Connection Fee Calculation and your experience, do you find that the document is accurate in its calculation? Yes. Okay. I would like the record to reflect the document entitled Mount Holly MUA Connection Fee Calculation to be marked as Exhibit D. That's my understanding that the authority is proposing an increase in the connection fees as calculated in Exhibit D and as stated in Schedule 1, connection fees of Exhibit A and B. Is that correct? Correct. 
and the effective date of these new proposed connection fee changes would be July 1st, 2013? Yes. Okay. Let us now proceed to discuss the proposed rate adjustments to Schedule 2 and Schedule 4 of the Authority's Schedule of Rates. Are you familiar, Mr. Rizzuto, with the annual budget of the Authority? Yes, I am. Okay. And what kind of financial information does the Authority's annual budget contain? The annual budget contains the projected expenses and revenues of the Authority for the fiscal year, which runs from January 1 to December 31st. It includes operation and maintenance expenses, capital improvement expenses, and debt service payments. It also includes the estimated revenues that the Authority anticipates during the fiscal year from all sources, including connection fees, service charges, and miscellaneous income. The Authority must anticipate revenues equal to projected expenses in each fiscal year in order for the budget to be approved by the State of New Jersey Department of Community Affairs. Okay. Did the Authority submit a budget for 2013? Yes, the budget was submitted to the State of New Jersey Department of Community Affairs and it was approved as being reasonable and necessary. Okay. Are you familiar with the current schedule of rates of the Authority? Yes. It's my understanding that the Authority is proposing an increase to Schedule 2 and Schedule 4 of the Schedule of Rates and has previously marked as Exhibit A and B. Is that correct? Correct. Would you please explain why an increase in the Authority's Schedule of Rates is necessary? Yes. An analysis was conducted to determine if the current rate structure can provide the revenues necessary to support the Authority's immediate future debt service coverage, to support the Authority's capital improvement program, to support the Authority's projected annual budget for fiscal years 2014 through 2017, and return to compliance with the Authority's bond resolution. And what did this analysis reveal? My analysis of the Authority's debt service schedule revealed that the Authority's debt service averages over $3.5 million for fiscal years 2014 and 2015. And in fiscal year 2016, the Authority's debt service increases $469,000, or 14%, to $4 million. In its commitment to replace assets once they have exceeded their useful life, the Authority has projected a capital improvement program totaling $5.8 million over the next five fiscal years. An analysis of the previous three annual budgets revealed approximately 81% of the Authority's projected revenues derived from billed water service customers. Over those three fiscal years, 2010 through 2012, water usage from billed water service customers showed a reduction in water usage of 78 million gallons, or 6%, resulting in a decrease in anticipated revenue of $392,000. According to the Authority's bond resolution, the Authority must maintain debt service coverage in a one-to-one ratio. In fiscal years 2011 and 2012, the Authority was deficient of this one-to-one debt service coverage by $203,749 and $63,225, respectively. The Authority's deficiency of maintaining a one-to-one ratio was one of the several reasons cited by various credit rating agencies, along with a decline in net working capital, a decline in unrestricted reserves, and material increases in debt that one credit rating agency decreased the Authority's bond rating from A1 to A2, while another credit rating agency decreased the Authority's bond rating from A-plus to AA-. In fiscal year 2012, the Authority transferred $375,000 from the Renewal and Replacement Fund, a fund established to pay for major repairs, replacement of assets, or maintenance of items not recurring annually, to the Debt Service Fund to make principal and interest payments on Authority bonds. Lastly, in planning of projected future annual budget, the Authority continued with its plan to diminish its reliance on connection fees as a revenue source. Mr. Rizzuto, could you please explain the proposed rate adjustments? Yes, the Authority is proposing a three-phase rate adjustment. Can you explain that three-phase rate adjustment? Yes. As stated in Schedule 2 of the Authority's Schedule of Rates, there are two components to the Authority's sewer service charges. There's a base charge called the Service Billing Charge that is billed at a flat rate to all customers depending on the size of their water meter. There is also a usage charge called the Sewage Flow Charge that is billed to all customers and is based on the amount of water for that billing period. We are proposing rate adjustments to all customers in three phases. In the first phase, we are proposing rate adjustments to the base charge and usage charge. The first phase will become effective on July 1, 2013. In the second phase, we are proposing rate adjustments to the usage charge only. 
The second phase would automatically become effective on January 1, 2014. In the third phase, we are proposing rate adjustments to the uses charge only. The third phase would automatically become effective on January 1, 2015. Okay, and are there any other proposed changes to Schedule 2 of the authority's schedule of rates? Yes, postage and handling charge of $1.50 per billing period for Mount Holly Township and $2.25 per billing period for outside Mount Holly Township shall be assessed. Would the effective date of the postage and handling charge also be July 1st, 2013? Yes. Okay, are there any proposed rate adjustments to Schedule 4 of the authority's schedule of rates? Yes, garbage disposal shall be charged $6 per quarter for Mount Holly Township and $9 per quarter outside of Mount Holly Township. Okay, and the effective date of these proposed rate adjustments to Schedule 4 of the authority's schedule of rates would also be July 1st, 2013? Yes. Okay, Mr. Rizzuto, do you have an opinion as to whether the proposed rate increase of the authority is necessary, and if so, is reasonable an amount to raise the additional revenues needed to balance the projected annual budgets and to address the results of your analysis? In my opinion, the proposed rates are reasonable since the projected revenues under the new schedule of rates are designed to meet projected expenses. In my opinion, the proposed rate increase is absolutely necessary if the authority is to generate sufficient revenues to meet its anticipated expenses. Okay, well, at this time, I have no further questions of Mr. Rizzuto. At this time, if there's any members of the public who wish to ask the authority any questions, you can come forth and state your name and address prior to asking the question so that the reporter may make an accurate record. You mind if I sit down and speak my voice up? Yeah, that's fine. Just state your name and address for the record. My name is Luis Lopez. I live at 370 South Martin Avenue, Mount Holly, New Jersey, 08060. My question is, what's the percentage uh, increase from the last year to this year? Of what, Lewis? Uh, the base charge? Yeah, base from charge. last year to this year. Overall? Yes. Well, we haven't had a rate increase. Okay. Well, I don't know if we actually figured it out on a percentage basis, but I think, I think roughly, what's, Tracy, what's the average uh, user amount on the, uh, well, how many gallons? Back up. Lewis, we haven't had a rate increase on our usage since 2007. So we, the rates haven't changed since then on the flat fees or the metered service rates. Well, the only rate increase we've had annually was our connection fee rates. Oh, and so the are you asking about the connection fee rates? Yes, yeah, for the new, uh, let's say, if, for example, uh, the new uh, West Hampton uh, development, that's going to be the new rates. Yeah, the, the, the new connection fee rate is a 4% increase over last year's. So I live in the, you know, at my house, there will be any 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 increase. Uh, since you're an existing customer, and your house is already established, and you're already a, a customer of the authority. The connection fee rate schedule doesn't pertain to your residence. Okay, thank you. Tracy, you just want to state your name and position with the authority for the record. Tracy. Uh, <clears throat> and is there any members of the public with further questions for the authority? Seeing that no one wishes to ask any further questions, are there any members of the public who wish to make a statement? And again, if you do, please state your name and address prior to making your statement for the record. And Mr. Chairman, seeing that no one wants to make any further statements, I would recommend the public portion of the great hearing be closed upon the proper motion. Thank you. All right, we'll move to questions from the board for further questions.
due to the the debt and bonding situation it was somewhat necessary coupled with the fact that we looked at every avenue of the student authority's current budget you know where we could economize where it could not and we haven't had a rate increase in how many years please? 2007. Right so six years so a combination of all those factors you know necessitates a rate increase. I think we should also point out that as land gets used up in these five towns there's less land to build on so there's less land for new building and for new connection fees. We can't depend on connection fees forever. Plus there's a note made that we have a significant drop in the amount that was water flow and usage so that has to be made up too. So I think all those things combined are necessary for the foundation. Anyone else? Mr. Chairman, I thought that this resolution be approving both the connection fee and the usage fee. Yeah we can just vote for it. Yes. Okay let's go forward with the motion. Commissioner Hardy? Yes. Commissioner Parenti? Yes. Commissioner Sessoms? Yes. Commissioner Beeson? Yes. Chairman Edwards? Yes. Okay what we have now in front of us is an approval of the preliminary approval of the school agreement between the MUA and the two urban partners. Partners will be able to address the motion of the board. These should be resolutions Mr. Chairman. This will be 2013-55 for those two. Yep. Okay resolution 213-55. No. No public comment. There's no changes from previously discussed? No this is part of the building approval process. I started talking to the board about back in February or March. So this is just the agreement was revised added but as written and as presented it's it's filled out completely. Okay
Joe and I reviewed the uh, application process that we were using. It hadn't been updated since 2004. We found some areas where it just needed to be updated to uh, comply with current regulations with regard to equal opportunity employment, so on and so forth. Uh, we made those revisions. We established a interview questionnaire, which we never had before, which makes sure that we stay within the parameters uh, established for questions that can be asked by a potential employer or a potential employee. And we also added um, some other documents with regard to background checks, so on and so forth, just to firm everything up. There were a couple areas that uh, were still gray. We firmed them up. They're in black and white now. Uh, and uh, what we're asking for is to prove this as an interim amendment to the EPL manual that was approved uh, in May of last year. Thank you. Again, it was a combination of looking at what we had, realizing we had some gray areas, and we just brought it up to the current Commissioner Carty? Yes. Commissioner Pierce? Yes. Commissioner Sokoff? Yes. Commissioner Thiefen? Yes. Chairman Edwards? Yes. Commissioner Pierce, 1351, operating expenses. Anticipated payroll through to the next okay, meeting. 
this thing. The bold number jumps out at you. You don't see the. Eight seventy. I mean, the six seventy five on the last page of the report. It's always your right. No, I didn't say that. You said that. When you look at this, all you see is two ninety bold. What woman doesn't think that? Commissioner Carty. Yes. Commissioner Parenti. Yes. Commissioner Silcox. Yes. Uh, I've got two uh, two questions and uh, a clarification, if you can ask. The clarification is how far you service uh, to the Morristown, the connection. Just the Laurel Creek section. That's uh, before Main Street? Oh, yeah, we have this. Uh, well, it, it, if you go down uh, Main Street, you can Oh, okay, thank you. For okay. Second is, what's the update for that solo project? Can you tell me that? <laughs> sure. um, uh, the solar contractor is significantly completed construction. The system is up and running. Uh, there is deliverables still yet to be received by the authority um, and some site restoration. So that is that process is ongoing. Does mean I can request a, a, a sightseeing or a trip? We, are, we will have a ribbon cutting ceremony once the deliverables in the site is, is cleaned up and restored back to original. 
we will be having a ribbon cutting ceremony and I'll be more than happy to give you a tour whenever you would like. Yeah, if you could page me or Jason could page me, I would like to be there. Sure. The second question is, uh, I don't mean to be harsh, but the, the percentage, the percentage rate from the uh, Mahadi's uh, municipal uh, building, that's 5%, right? According to state statute, uh, up to 5% up to can be requested by the entity that established the authority, which in this case is the Mount Holly Township. And how much is that? $325 or $525,000? That's a maximum, right? The maximum that can request. And what's the next payment for this year? Do you know uh, what date? No, we don't have a date. We are strictly adhering to the service agreement that we have with Mount Holly Township. Okay, thank you. Pre-existing service agreement. Thank you. Uh, we have, we have that. I know violations. It's been years since we've had a violation. I don't remember. 